Hi guys, today, I am here with a 2000 adventure drama film called The Beach. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy and take care. Richard travels to Thailand in search of something more interesting. He is sleeping in a rundown hotel, and when he is unable to enter his room, a girl named Francoise, who is staying in the next room with her lover Etienne, assists him. He can hear them doing their business through the thin walls as he sleeps in bed. Then he is interrupted by Daffy, a maniac from the other room. He tells Richard about a hidden beach on a prohibited, secret island. He had no idea such a location exists, but when he returns the next day, he sees a map stuck to his door. He goes to check on Daffy and sees that he has committed suicide. After speaking with the cops, he presents the map to his neighbors and informs them about the secret island. They all look keen to travel somewhere no tourist has gone before, and Etienne works out the details. They drive 500 kilometers in one day and end up someplace on a beach. Etienne points out that the island is a national park and so off limits, but they may travel to a nearby island and swim from there. Richard is unable to enter his room once more since he has misplaced his key, but the two surfers next to him encourage him to join them. They talk about the magical island with the beautiful beach of pristine white sand and crystal blue water, but they believe it's only an urban myth. Before continuing his journey the next day, Richard provides them with a copy of the map. They board a boat to their final location and camp for the night. Richard is woken by Francois photographing the night sky. He claims that there is most likely a planet similar to theirs somewhere in the endless cosmos, with a different version of them photographing back. She claims it's the same stupid nonsense Americans constantly say to French females in order to get them to sleep with them. The next day, the three attempts to estimate the distance they must swim, fearing they may drown if it is too long, but Richard says, if we don't try, we will never know, and eagerly leaps in. They arrive at the shore after a long, exhausting swim. They travel inland and come across a big hemp crop. Richard observes a monkey attached to a sleeping guy holding an AK-47 by a cord. The monkey awakens him, and the three of them escape into the field. A group of additional guards arrives and begins searching for them. The monkey tracks them down, but Richard sprays it with water, and they escape unnoticed. Following this, the couple begins to have second thoughts, but Richard is eager to locate the paradise on Earth, so they continue. The group continues downstream until they reach a waterfall that falls over a large cliff. The guys argue about how to get down, but Francoise just jumps and encourages the others, and they soon follow. They applaud and yell in response to the thrilling experience, but are abruptly interrupted by a man named Kitty, who is clapping. He said it took him an hour to get the bravery to jump. Then he drives them to the village, they anticipated to find a handful of passing tourists staying in cave, but instead discover a thriving community of long-term residents, and realize they weren't even invited. They are escorted to the community's leader, Sal, and show her the map Duffy created. She informs them that Daffy was one of the community's founders, but he went crazy. She emphasizes that they appreciate their privacy and inquires whether they created a map for anybody else. They all deny it, and she appears happy before burning the map. The trio is driven to a beach in a lagoon surrounded by cliffs with crystal pure blue water. They soak in its magnificence, happy that they have arrived at their destination and that it is as lovely as described. As they wind down that evening, Richard realizes he has finally found a place where he belongs. The following day, Sal describes how the community operates. They cultivate their own food, make their own homes, and are nearly self-sufficient. They merely have to sail back to civilization every now and again to exchange some grass for rice. It was agreed with the farmers on the opposite side of the island that as long as additional people did not come to the island, the three Swedes instruct them how to spear fish, and Richard quickly picks it up. The community offers a wide variety of athletic and recreational activities to suit all preferences. Sal's lover Bugs, their carpenter, is the one person Richard dislikes because he mocks Richard for being a freeloader. It is common in the community for the most recently arrived member to tattoo the next. It was true that he was in heaven, but there was something else he desired. Kitty comes up to Richard one day when he is starring at Francoise and tells him all the reasons he can never be with her. Soon later, one of the guys expresses a desire to travel to the mainland to see a dentist, but Sal refuses this. Richard realizes that in order to keep a secret, individuals must sometimes go through some pain. They use pliers to extract his teeth. Francoise asks Richard on a walk on the beach that night. She admits that she likes him a lot, but she finds it difficult to spend time with him because she is dating Etienne. 
they take a swim in the sparkling water and begin kissing. They vow to keep it a secret from one another. Etienne later confronts Richard about his connection with his girlfriend. He tries to act stupid, but Etienne says, "Everyone already knows." Despite his heartbreak, he states unequivocally that he will not stand in their way, since he simply wants her to be happy, even if it is with Richard. It's raining outside on one of these days. Christo notes that the low visibility makes it tough to catch fish. The rain might continue for weeks, and they can become quite hungry at times. Richard decides to give it a shot, grabs Christo's equipment, and swims out into the lagoon. He turns around and sees the other members panicked, but he can't hear them. He suddenly detects a shark fin and begins to swim quickly to shore, but the shark chases him. The scene shifts back to the communal house, where he describes how he defeated the shark. Everyone cheers him enthusiastically, but Bugs is unimpressed because it was only a baby shark. Richard, on the other hand, puts himself in his place and go to sleep. Sal later notifies the group that their rice has been tainted by a fungus, which means that someone will have to travel to the mainland for shopping. Nobody accepts, so she asks Richard to join her. One by one, the members provide him with their shopping list, which consists mostly of food, batteries, and hygiene supplies, but also includes plenty of other stuff that they can't get here. Finally, Bugs comes, grabs him by the balls, and warns him to keep his hands to himself and the little Richard in his pants. He was looking forward to the air conditioning and cold beer, but as they arrived, he realized why he wanted to leave in the first place. He also saw why Sal was working so hard to keep the beach a secret, because if they didn't, it would quickly turn into this. He and Sal go to a pub once they finish their shopping. The surfer boys and their girlfriends interrupt them. Sal overhears Richard being presented as the man with the map. The surfing group appears to be quite excited to visit the island, but Richard tells them that the map is fake and that the beach does not exist. They don't trust him, believing he's simply trying to take advantage of them. This enrages Richard, so he attacks them. Sal then asks if he made them a copy of the map, but Richard, not wanting to admit anything, claims that he simply told where he was going and that they only saw it once. She exhales a sigh of relief, knowing they won't be able to get there without a map. Sal says she'll keep it a secret, then leaves to play pool with a buddy and tells Richard to warm the bed. They next do some pair yoga exercises. It was payment for her quiet as well as his return ticket to the island. When they return, Richard distributes all of the orders to the thankful members. He offers Françoise a disposable camera, but she questions whether anything occurred on the rice run because Sal has been said to be drawn to him. Not wanting to ruin the moment, Richard assures her that nothing occurred and that everything will return to normal. Françoise snaps a photo of group. Richard is relaxing in a hammock, playing a game when he hears terrified shouts. When he walks outdoors, he discovers that the Swedes have been attacked by a shark. One of them has a bite wound on his torso and is missing a part of his leg. He pursues the route to the beach and comes upon Christo, who has a bite in his leg and is gasping in pain. He is led inside, where Sal promises to take him to the hospital if he does not disclose their location. He begs them to come aid here since he is now scared of water and refuses to go near it. Sal refuses his request, telling him to either go or stay and take his risks. Members pay their respects and bury Christo's friend. They tried to return to normal after the funeral, but Christo's continual painful screams worried the group. Richard considers whether, after a major tragedy, one should heal or die so that everyone can remark, "What a fine man you were," and move on. It's the waiting in between that frustrates people the most. Despite Etienne's pleas, the group chooses to take Christo to a tent in the woods. The community quickly returned to normal. Sal later takes Richard to the opposite side of the island and shows him the surfers with the maps. She reiterates that the farmers assured them there would be no more people, but it appears that they are already handing out tour guides. Sal is enraged and instructs him to return every day until they come in order to send them away and obtain the chart. Richard observes that they may stay there for weeks, but she is unconcerned. That night, Françoise comes up behind him and smacks him. Sal informed everyone about what happened on their trip. He knew it was going to happen, but it still hurt. He discovers new methods to entertain himself as the days pass. He begins to sneak about the farmers, observing their everyday routines. He acts like he's in a video game. He missed them less and less the longer he was away from the community. He discovered new players, even if they weren't aware of it. He begins to mess things up for the farmers. He gradually begins to lose his mind and has visions of Daffy. 
Kihi visits him one day and finds him completely out of it. He advises Richard to gather himself because he can't keep rushing about in the dark without speaking to anyone. However, he is unable to reach Richard. He begins to build traps in the woods while getting images of Daffy. Daffy led the way and revealed the truth to him. Richard will not disappoint him. He begins to creep around the farmer's homes, touching their weapons while they are sleeping. He steals one of the men's headbands. The big day has arrived. The surfers arrive in a raft and quickly reach the coast. Richard keeps a close eye on them. When they get in the hemp field, they believe they have arrived in heaven and begin dancing and singing. This draws the attention of the guards, who arrive with their guns drawn. They see the guards and inform them that they have made a mistake by coming here and that they will go immediately. When that fails, they give them money. As the scene worsens, a surfer approaches one of the farmers and pulls the trigger. Panic ensues, and two more people are killed, leaving only one female. As soon as she reaches the end of the field, Richard takes up position and hisses at her. She freezes in panic, and also gets shot. One of the farmers chases him down but is caught in the trap. Richard arrives at the camp, where they are celebrating their sixth year of survival. Sal raises a glass to many more years ahead. Richard hides in the shadows, unable to remember the person he once was, and convinced that he will never find him again as long as he remains on this island. He intercepts Francoise and attempts to persuade her to join him. She brings him to the tent, and Richard attempts to persuade the three of them to go, but Etienne can't leave Christo behind. His leg is infected with gangrene, which is spreading. Meanwhile, the celebration is heating up. Richard instructs them to meet him at the boat, saying that he would handle the Christo matter. They escape, but the farmers apprehend them. Christo is put out of his suffering by Richard. He suffered because they would not let anything ruin their great time. Richard is knocked out as he exits the tent. The farmers come in and ruin the party. The older farmer expresses his frustration with more people arriving with maps, endangering his livelihood and ability to send money to his family. Everyone but Sal agrees when he tells them to leave the island. Richard try to convince her, but she shouts at him to be silent because it's all his fault in the first place. The farmer realizes he was the one creeping around, messing with their weapons, and leading others here. He tosses Sal a handgun loaded with a single bullet and tells her, she may stay if she murders Richard. Bugs tethers him to the pole. Sal feels strongly, despite Richard's pleadings for mercy. Unlike with Christo, he claims that this time everyone will see what it takes to keep their paradise continuing. She tells them they can have it and pulls the trigger, but it's a blank. Richard bursts out laughing. As the community crumbles and its members escape, the senior farmer smirks. Except for Sal, everyone else boarded a raft and returned to their usual lives. Richard is in an internet cafe, checking his email, when he comes upon Francoise's group photo. Paradise is not a destination, but rather a point in time when you feel like you belong. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.